when we're dealing with chronic diseases and people's risk of acquiring chronic diseases, we're dealing with a set of factors that, that transcend the purely biomedical level, which has long been understood. Factors have involving simple things like aspects of, of uh, the composition of a diet, aspects of, of uh, genetic risk. Instead, those levels of issues are entangled with a variety of other factors um, that um, shape and, and ultimately greatly influence this risk. Um, many of those factors have to do with a person's environment, the built environment in which they're embedded, which shapes their, their, uh, their behavior, also the aspects of the social environment, components having to do with family history and family norms, um, as well as norms in the context of, of their peers. And uh, these factors, which are entangled with each other to shape ultimately behavior and ultimately the likelihood of developing chronic disease, those factors are very difficult to analyze in a purely reductionist way, in a way that we take things apart and understand the pieces. Instead, we need tools which complement reductionist uh, attempt, uh, approaches, complement traditional approaches, but, but help us put them together to get an understanding of how the behavior of the whole transcends the behavior of a part. So system science approaches can help us design, through use particularly of simulation modeling, uh, interventions that are likely to be more effective, but they can also help us when we put in place interventions, put in place policies, we observe their effects, sometimes we're disappointed and a system science technique can help us leapfrog to the next level by helping us understand why we saw barriers, why we see this policy resistance, and help us learn more quickly, more deeply, and more reliably about how to overcome that to have the next policy be much more uh, substantial, much more uh, successful in the, the outcomes secured. One of the ways is by, by lending practitioners uh, a voice at the table. Um, many system science techniques seek um, to engage in a participatory fashion with, with stakeholders to help them recognize how um, they, they might be able to pursue their aims, their goals more effectively in the context of their system and how they might work more effectively with others at different components within the prevention system, perhaps on a cross-sectoral basis with allied health professionals or others. Um, another way in which uh, system science techniques can work is by providing prevention practitioners with a way of of working with the latest evidence um, for, uh, in order to, to help make sense of what they're trying to accomplish in, in light of the decisions that are available to them. So prevention practitioners obvi uh, obviously commonly lack um, the, uh, the luxury of keeping up with the very latest evidence. Um, and uh, these system science models can provide a way to take and synthesize that latest evidence in a way that can be actionable for these practitioners, to ask what if questions, and to engage with models to understand the, the likely outcomes of, of potential changes that they may be uh, considering in the context of their stakeholder communities. In this very exciting area, um, I believe the single most uh, exciting, single greatest opportunity is associated with this confluence on the one hand of data science and the other hand with system science in areas of, of direct policy relevance. Here, our system science approaches have long sought to understand the complex tangled pathways by which interventions that seek to prevent chronic disease secure their effects. But one of the recurrent issues we've run into is the fact that the models that we build there are oft under-resourced under in terms of the data that's been traditionally available through traditional instruments. Data science, this advent of big data, this confluence of electronically sourced data from areas as varied as our smartphones, uh, these biomedical sensors such as Fitbits, and from sources as, but as uh, prosaic as the weather and GIS databases. Those types of data sources provide a way 
of tying down, of grounding our models, grounding our models in a way that would never have been possible a decade ago, so that when we formulate an intervention using a system science technique, it can be with data regarding aspects of human behavior, of micro behavior, people's physical activity during the day, their mobility patterns, aspects of their social context in the context of their, of their physical activity. Um, these factors can be elicited at a much more robust level. And when we put in place an intervention, we can more quickly learn from it by comparing the data we secure through these novel data collection sources, on the one hand, with, with uh, understanding from our models to help us learn more quickly, more robustly, more deeply from our intervention experiments. So this, I believe, is the single most exciting way in which these new techniques can help inform prevention science for chronic disease.